Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Baseball Plus. Today I thought I would do a little tutorial on the Paul Marino boards. These are charts that are for the APBA baseball game. And they kind of bridge the gap between the basic game and the master game. Makes it kind of a hybrid game, if you will. Or it turns the master game into a more simple game. However you want to look at it. Um... So it brings stealing in, it brings in the lefty-righty matchups, and those are the two main things that it's going to bring in and make the game a little more realistic, or give you some more decisions anyway. It definitely gives you a lot more decisions uh, throughout the game, and making out your lineups, because if you have a lefty on the mound, and you've got some left-handed hitters, you know maybe you want to substitute a righty in. So, let's take a look at the pitcher card first. Here's Clemens. This is from 1998 Toronto Blue Jays. Maybe if I move him over here, it might be a little better. Um, let's take a look at these letters and numbers up here. The ST is his steal rating, and his steal number is an N, which means never. Uh, speed, SP, and he is an S slow runner and a six so that's like his base running number if he was on bases running you would refer to that number wild pitch rating is a two bulk rating is a zero move to first zero and G this little letter right here is gonna cut down on some home runs turn some home runs into doubles and the Q2 is his fatigue rating. Okay, this is for the basic game. Grade A pitcher. Fielding is two, which you'll also use in the, this game. If you're using them, Paul Marino boards, you'll still use his fielding. You'll still use the X, Y. The only thing you won't use is the A because we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, 29 is his batter's faced. Um, so his grade that you're going to use in the Paul Marino boards game, the hybrid game here, you're going to use this 16 instead of this A. You're going to use 16. He's a grade 16 pitcher. Okay, so let's take Griffey. Say he's facing Ken Griffey. I'll move him up here. Seattle, 1998, Ken Griffey card. I'll put them side by side, maybe that'll help. Let's look at his numbers. Steel rating is an E, his number is a 31. Speed on the bases, fast, 17. And his arm rating is a 36. Fielding rating is a three. He can also place first base, and his rating there is a two. Okay, so let's, let's look at the matchup here. He's a left-handed batter. Clemens is a right-handed pitcher. So, if he's up, you can see right here, he's minus two versus righties. He's actually better versus a left-handed pitcher. He's a plus one. So the minus two here is not good. That's going to add two if Clemens was a... Well, Clemens is a righty, never mind. Clemens is a righty, okay, so minus 2, you're going to add that 2 to the 16, make him an 18. Because Griffey is not as good versus right-handers as he is lefty. Let's say Clemens was a lefty, he's facing a left-hander pitcher, plus 1. That's going to drop Clemens to a 15 if he was a left-handed pitcher. So it's kind of opposite of maybe some other games you're looking at, you you're thinking plus one is is not as good, but it's it's actually good in this game. It's not like an, an arm rating or, or something in, in other games. Okay? So that's how you adjust the pitcher. And there may be some sets that you're going to have that may not have a lefty-righty split. It may just have one number down here. 
and the only time you would use that number is if it's a righty righty matchup or a lefty lefty matchup in this case let's say there was just one number down here there wasn't the split and this matchup was here it was Griffey versus Clemens you wouldn't use that number you wouldn't make that adjustment and that number is not going to have a plus or minus it's just going to be a number and it will be assumed that it's a minus it's always a minus because yeah it's always a minus because it's a same handedness the batter and the pitcher are the same handedness again that's if the set only has one number down here so if Griffey was facing a lefty and he had a two down here the lefty would get two added to his grade okay but he would probably have a plus one because he's better versus lefties actually he would probably have a zero because in that game it's only assumed it's it's a minus so in if he had a one number down here it would probably be a zero there would be no change for a lefty lefty matchup with Ken Griffey you follow me <laughs> uh, I'm trying to make it as clear as I can sometimes I have to repeat myself but okay so let's look at the chart base is empty Griffey versus Clemens he gets a let's say he gets a 31 which is a 9 okay again versus righties is a minus 2 so an 18 that makes Clemens an 18 so you'd come up here look under 18 go down to where the 9 is and instead of a single you're going to come across here and instead of a single it's a 28 so you would come down here to 28 and it's a ground out to short unless he has a K unless the pitcher has a K it'd be a strikeout he does not have a K so it's just a ground out to short it doesn't wouldn't matter if it was fielding one two or three it's the same all the way across because it's blank the other two are blank okay also <clears throat> now let's say he gets a let's say he ends up with a 20 here a rating of 20 and he hits a home run you come across here under 20 you see this GH here if the pitcher has a G or an H instead of a home run it's a double well Clemens has a G so Clemens keeps the home run from being a home run and turns it into a double if the pitcher had an H same thing if you come down here to this double line where the double is you get any of these results where there's an M or an L and an M and the pitcher has an L or an M instead of a double it becomes a home run I don't know that I can find a pitcher real quickly that has an L or an M, but that's how that works. Um, if you look down here on this chart, let's say you get a any of these numbers and shaded in blue, you'll see there's a fielding there's a fielder listed next to the result. In that case, you're going to look at the individual fielder. So if you had a 15, a result of 15, you're going to look at the other team's left fielder. And you're going to see what fielding column he is going to be in. And you're going to find that up here. Okay, left outfield. Here's the outfield rating for fielding three. Obviously, if he's a one, he's going to be in fielding three. If he's a two, he'll be in fielding two. If he's a three, he'll be in fielding one. You'll look in fielding one. So you could have a difference here. If, if he's a good outfielder, Griffey's a three, say it was hit to him, it's going to be a fly out to left because he's a rated three fielder. 
same thing with all these. You know, if it's hit to the shortstop, if it's an 18, you'll look at the shortstop's rating. You'll find it up here. If he's a 9 or 10 rated shortstop, you'll look in fielding 1. And it'll be a single. Instead of an error, it's a single. So basically, he saves himself from an error. Unless there's two outs, this is the two out result with the asterisk, then he would make the play. Okay. Um, if you get fielding two and it's blank, you're going to go to this, this one here. This side moves over until you hit something different. First on air on the shortstop, first on air on the shortstop, single. Air on the second baseman, air on the second baseman, single. Unless there's two outs, then he'll make the play because they're assuming with two outs he's going to be playing normal position. Okay, so everything over here keeps moving until there's something different. Um, let's, I hope I'm answering all the questions. I don't, one thing you're going to need in this game is the steel success chart. I found this online. You get all the charts basically on one page. This steel success chart is all you're going to need. And it's basically it's the same as the base runner advancement chart. It's laid out the same way. The numbers correspond the same. So this is all you need. Um, let's look at a runner on third because that's a little bit different. If there's a runner on third base in this game, you'll notice, I'll kind of scoot this down here. Down here at the bottom, there's a tag up. Because you'll see some of these results that'll have these numbers here. Three numbers. Next to the result. So let's take a look at some of those. If you get a 30, fly out to left. And you have a 50, a 56, a 61. You're going to have to roll another D6 just once. And let's say we get a 2. You'll be looking at this first number. Because a 1 or a 2 is the first number. A 3 or a 4 on the D6 is the middle number. A 5 or a 6 is the last number. Okay, in this case we get a 2. We're going to look at the first number. 50. So tagging up is depth. This is the depth number plus the speed of the runner. Let's look at Griffey. He's a speed of 17. And we got a 50. Depth plus speed. So 50 plus 17 is 67 minus the outfielder's arm. Let's say Griffey was in the outfield. His arm is a 36. So 57 minus 36 is 21. I hope. So 21. And you'll look on, you can use the same chart. Um, we have a 21. So you look at the result of a 21 is right here. The black number is the result. Not the result, but the result we came up with, the value. So here's the dice roll numbers, the red. The dice roll numbers, the red. So 43 or less, anything of 43 or less, the runner will advance. Since we got a 21. And if you look at the base runner advancement table, it's the same thing. 43 or less, 21. The three column is for the trail runner, but all we're doing is advancing on a, on a or tagging up on a fly ball. That's how I do it. I don't know if that's 100% right, but that's how I'm doing it. So you'll find your value once you add and subtract. You'll find it here in this, like I said, it's the same numbers. You'll find it in the black. And then you'll see what kind of dice roll you'll need, 43 or less, and he'll tag up. 
and be safe. Otherwise, I say he gets thrown out. If it's higher than 43. Um, also, on some of these other charts here, you'll see positions numbered. You can use those. You can also look at those individual fielders if you want. I only do it in the shaded blue area. That's the only time I look at the individual fielder. But anytime one's listed, you can do it. For instance, here it says infield. That is the combined total of your infielder's rating. You would add all those up and you would look at what column they fall under. For instance, fielding two here, your infield, if it's rated 31 to 35, it's going to be fielding two. 36 or more will be fielding one. So all you're doing is adding up the fielding ratings of your infielders, including the pitcher, catcher. All you're doing is, or you can subtract out your outfielders once you get your total, your fielding total for your team. You can subtract out your outfielders, and there you go. There's your infield. That's if you know. I, I assume these are optional. I don't I don't use them unless it's in the shaded blue. Um, let's see, stealing. We need to look at stealing, I guess. Let's see. So Griffey's an e-stealer. You'll need to know when guys can steal and when they can't steal. Um, you can probably find that online. Um, it does help to have the Master Game booklet because it has all that. Um, basically, an A stealer can steal anytime. A B stealer uh, can steal if they're down by one run, tied, or ahead by any number. And it goes on and on. An E stealer, which Griffey is, there has to be two outs. And they can be down by one, tied, or ahead by one. Basically, there has to be two outs before he can steal. Okay, so stealing is pretty simple. You'll take the move to first from Clemens, which is a zero. You'll take, so there's no not going to be any change on his stealing number, which is 31. You'll take the catcher's throwing Let's see if we can find Toronto's catcher. His throwing number, Kevin Brown, may not be the starter, but his throwing number is a zero. So there's no change from the 31. Now if you look at Chris Carpenter here, he's got a plus two. So that would subtract, that means he's good. Move to first is good. So you would subtract two from the 31 plus the catcher's throwing, which we saw was zero. But in this case, Clemens is zero, throwing is a zero, 31, I'm thinking, that's his arm. 31 is the stealing number. So here's 31 in the black, so 61 or less, and he's gonna be safe. It's a pretty good chance to steal, but he can only steal with two outs, so that cuts down his opportunities. Okay, so let's see, the fatigue, pitcher fatigue is another thing we'll look at. Uh, Clemens is a Q2, which means that's another thing you're going to have to, you're going to need to find either online or have the master game. Well, you can find the master game instructions online, and it'll, that'll have all the Q2 uh, stuff on it. You can find this booklet online. So he's a Q2, so reduce grade by one point at the beginning of the eighth inning, one additional point at the beginning of the ninth inning, two additional points at each succeeding inning. That's for Clemens. So at the beginning of the eighth inning, instead of a 16, he's going to be a 15. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, the pitcher advancement, great advancements. 
work like this. A pitcher's grade advances five points if he allows no earned runs for a string of consecutive innings. And it depends on his grade. If he's a one to five, he has to go five consecutive innings without allowing an earned run, and he can increase five points. So Clemens is a 16. That's going to put him, he will need to go eight consecutive innings before he moves up to a 20. A 20 is as high as you can go. Okay. As far as great advancement, 20 is as high as you can go. Now you can have a pitcher up here, as you can see, could be a 30. Obviously he wouldn't have anywhere to go, but um, so one to five good has to go five consecutive innings. A six to ten rated pitcher has to go six innings. Eleven to fifteen has to go seven consecutive. A sixteen or more has to go eight. Sixteen or higher before he can go up to a twenty because they increase five points. And it's also a cumul cumulative. So if a pitcher is a one to five rated, and he goes five consecutive innings, he'll go up to a, let's say he's a five, he'll go up to a 10. If he goes another inning, he'll go up to a 15. All right, so for decreasing, if a pitcher allows a total of five earned runs in three consecutive innings, his base grade is reduced by five points immediately after the fifth earned run is scored. And it can continue to decrease by five points every additional five earned runs scored within the consecutive nine out period. So if he gives up another five runs for the rest of the game, he goes down another five points. And if he's less than five already, he just goes down to a one. Okay, um, I'm, I'm not sure that I've covered everything. I hope I have. You might get a result hit by pitcher. In parentheses, it may say HBO zero or HB zero. Hit by pitcher zero. It's a ball. Um, Clemens does not have a hit by pitch. HB rating. So if they don't have an HB rating, I consider that a zero, same as a zero. He has a balk rating of zero, so sometimes they just don't put things on there for whatever reason. I don't know, but I assume it's a zero if it's not on there. I don't know what else to assume. Why did they put the balk zero on there? And I don't know, but they didn't put the HB zero on there. Um, wild pitch ratings of two. Let's see. May have, is there any results where it says wild pitch? Um, maybe. Yeah. You may get a wild pitch runner second in parentheses. Like down here it says wild pitch three only. Otherwise it's a ball. That means... If the pitcher has a wild pitch rating of three, then it is a wild pitch. Otherwise, it's a ball. Okay, in this game. Here's another one. Wild pitch runner to third. Wild pitch two and three only. So if he has a wild pitch rating of one or zero, it's a ball. There's an HB hit by hit batter zero, it's a ball. So if it's hit, hit batter rating is a zero, it's a ball. Otherwise, hit by pitch. Um what else? What else? Again, on these flyouts, if the pitcher has a K rating, it's a, it's a strikeout. You just disregard all this, just like normal. Two-out result, 
If it has an asterisk, it's the two out result. So instead of a single here, it's a balk. The runner scores. If there's two outs. Um, I think that about covers it. I did notice on my 78 set, there was no Q rating for the pitchers. No Q rating. It just, it had the batter's face down here, but no Q rating on the 78 set. So, I think you just use your own discretion there. You just kind of, maybe after he's faced 29 batters, you drop him down one to 15. And then the next inning, if he's still going, you drop him down another one, 14. That'd be my suggestion there if there's no Q rating. And now obviously if he hasn't allowed any earned runs, you're gonna be do doing the, the pitcher advancement anyway. There's not gonna be any, you're not gonna worry about the fatigue. Okay. So that is going to do it, I think. But again, if you have any questions, if I missed something, let me know in the comments below. So that's going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys. Until next time, take care and God bless.